back to my next video as you can see right away things are a little different i don't believe i've ever done this before uh what i'm doing is we're on my website cheaprvliving.com in fact you can see right up here this is cheaprvliving.com and so that's where we are uh what happened is i had uh some folks write me and ask me bob i need floor plans i'm building my van i'd like to see a variety of floor plans do you have any any floor plans listed and so i i said well of course i have a whole website full of every bit of information you could possibly need and so i wrote them and said yeah and i sent them this link to this page with floor plans and then it occurred to me you know i've never talked to you my loyal listeners that i have a whole web uh web page website full of great information everything i know essentially as far as i know is on my website and so i get a lot of people write me questions and the vast majority of the time i'll just go to the website find a link and send it back to them you know there's no real good reason why i should read out write out again for every person who writes me the same thing i've already typed out and have pictures and explanations in depth on the website so that's why i created the website so when i got the the same question the thousandth time I could just send them to the website and said, here, I answered this question here. Take a look at the website, and then I will answer your question if it isn't clear to you. So that's exactly what the website is. And I'm going to start encouraging all of you to really go to my website and use it. Now, um, of course, I have the videos, and all the answers are in the videos, and I want you to watch the videos too. But a lot of your, a lot of your answers can be found on the website. So today's video is on floor plans. Uh, and I need to show you the picture, and I thought, well, I can just I can just cut out a picture and put it on the webs on the um, on the YouTube, on the video. But then I thought, well, we know how to do this. I don't know how to do this, but KC taught me, learned how to do this, and is sitting right beside me, <laughs> leading me through everything. I'm not doing any of this myself because I'm not smart enough, and fortunately she is. Uh, and so we're going to look at the floor plans. And so you can see. The uh, right here on the web page is cheaprvliving.com. I'm highlighting it now. There's the website and the page of the floor plans. You can just go now. Uh, you can even go now and and follow along on the um, on the web page while I'm on this video. So if you want to do that, go ahead. Put me on pause. Pull up a laptop and follow along, and you'll be looking at the at the page as I'm looking on it. So the the, the page is floor plans and bed designs. I wrote this in September 30th, 2015, you see here. And uh, this is, uh, I got this from the forum. Now let me explain what the forum is. The forum is a separate thing. Its, web, its address is cheaprvliving.com slash forums. I'll go up here and show you the, uh, the forum. You see right here is the forums. If you go to my website, click on that. And it will take you to the forums. And that's where people answer a million questions. And so one of the guys wanted to um, design his floor plan. So he designed it out. And this is it. And I asked his permission. He gave he has like half a dozen uh, different floor plans here. And he got people's feedback. And he designed them and redesigned them. And these are what he came up with. And he got people's, I got his permission to post his floor plans here and he graciously gave it to me and so we are going to look at his floor plans today so right here you can see this is number one this is the first one we're going to look at and it is probably the single most common floor plan you'll see the bed across the back and then storage of whatever kind you want along this wall the driver's seat would be here and the passenger seat here and the side door is here now notice he put in the wheel wells he marked in the wheel wells uh so that you would know you got to plan your whole build around the wheel wells if you need legs or whatever you need that you can't you have to work around the wheel wells so he he left these in you wouldn't see them because they'll be covered with all this other stuff uh but you can see them there so this is the back door uh driver's door uh and passenger seat uh this is the most common, I believe. The problem with this build is that if you're too tall, you can't go across the back. I'm 5'8", and on my van, I made my bed 48 inches wide, and I sleep at a diagonal. 
So in other words, my feet are here and uh, my head is up in this corner or vice versa, but I like to have my head up here. And so that is longer and I can barely fit in at, at, at five foot eight. If you are much more than five foot eight, I don't think you could probably fit in. Uh, if you're less than 5'8", then you're going to find this bed across very efficient. One of the main advantages is you can open the back door here and then get into all the storage from both the back and you can just get down and reach from under here. That gives you a lot of options to get a lot of storage space out of here. And then you put in whatever you want here. I just put in shelves and I put my galley is over here in this spot. Uh, and that works really well for me. Uh, so that's a real common one, and now uh, let's just go on to the next one. Uh, this is now probably the second most common. If you're taller than 5'8", uh, or if you're 6, especially 6 and more, you have to run basically the bed across here. Uh, and so here would be the driver's seat, and this would be the driver's side, the bed across the back, and then storage right in here. Very common. And then you, that leaves you this whole area for storage. Now he made a note here and he's going to put this full height. And that's kind of what I did on mine, except they're just open shelves. This is very similar to what I did on mine with the open shelves. Uh, and then you have a crosswalk. Now he was going to carry a bike. And if you want to carry a bike or whatever, uh, this allowed him to put his bike in. And that was a big consideration to him, was where to put his bike. Um, and then this can be anything you want. So that is, uh, this is floor plan number two, one of the most common. Uh, you will have, you'll see a lot of vans built along this line. Let's go down to the next one. Here's the next one. Again, it's at a variation. Uh, still, the bed is across. He was taller. Most, a lot of you were taller. The bed goes across here. And then he's got storage here behind the seat. And he was going to turn it into a seat. So he could... Uh, actually set on it as a seat and then you see he's got a fold-out table here and that's uh that's a good thing i think a fold-out table so you could either put the hinge on the wall and have it fold out like this or you could put the hinge against this storage unit and have it fold out this way and then this little section right here would fold up and become a uh, a seat a couch and i, I really like that idea so this becomes a, a, a dinette. Basically, he's built in a dinette, and this folds up out of the way if he wants it to. Over here, he put use this for storage, and that's actually exact, exactly what I've done. I have put my galley right here. You've probably seen pictures of my van and seen me in my van. And then he just has more storage back here. Really common, very typical build, except for this fold-out table, and that's a very creative design. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. Oh, you know, I, I want something caught my eye. Uh, and let me let me reiterate this. Uh, you must be able to, let me see if I can just highlight this. You must be able to sit on the bed without your hitting your bed on the roof. That's so important. If you have a low top van, a lot of people don't pay that, don't think about that. They, they want a lot of storage underneath the bed, so they make it too tall. And then whenever they sit down, they bonk their head up on it. And man, that is uncomfortable. I did. I built a friend's bed exactly how they wanted once, and she found herself hitting her bed. And so we just then took our saws and cut off the, all the legs, dropped it by three inches so she could sit without hitting her head. That's a really big, a really good idea. So give that serious thought to the height of the bed. Yes, you want the maximum storage, but you also want uh, not to hit your head every time you sit down. So. Also, uh, something I want to point out here is the thickness, take into account the thickness of your mattress. Some people get 8 to 10 inch thick mattresses. I have a friend with a 10 inch mattress because he said, I'm going to have the best night's sleep I can get. But he has to sit on his bed with his head touching and it, his neck's all cricked over like this. And, um, and it's fine. He's comfortable with it. And so it's perfect. It's his decision to make. But my recommendation is get a 4 to 6 inch pad or even smaller uh, whatever the narrowest, smallest you can be comfortable on, you got to get a good night's sleep. Uh, so watch the height of your bed. Okay, I'll stop there. Now this is, uh, let's get rid of that. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Now back here, you see he's got storage full height. Basically what he's done is he's put in a, a wall here 
and this is outside storage. Um, kind of think of it as an outside garage. And I have actually several friends that did exactly this. And so then they have their bed here and this wall, and then this is outside storage. So, you know, we all have a lot of things we want to keep outside. So you have a propane tank that needs to be outside. You have your batteries. Maybe you have an outside grill that you carry with you. Maybe you have a toolbox and you want to, you have a fairly tall toolbox you want to put back there. So uh, all these things that uh, your, your winter coats and gear, whatever you have, uh, you have stuff that want, you want to go out here. Uh, shovels, maybe you're carrying shovels, tall stuff. So that puts all the outside stuff back here, easily accessible through the back door, and uh, it really opens up a lot of good storage space. Now, the ideal is if you have an extended van. Now, on most vans, the distance from the back door to behind the front seat is 10 feet. That's the most common on a full-size van. Shorty vans would be less, of course. No, there aren't any more shorty vans being made, so they're not common. Uh, most of us are going to have 10 feet from here to here. Uh, but now if you have an extended van, then you get two more feet back here. And that's where I think is really the, store, the garage really comes into play. If you have an extended van, put the storage, the two feet back there, and then you still have 10 feet for all your living space. That's ideal. But some people do it anyway. Or you could make this uh, back storage area one foot instead of two foot or any height that works for any length that works for you uh, so that works good i like this design but now remember notice he has minimum amount of storage space inside basically he can put he can build in this i would build it uh, to the roof so it's maximized and i would put something over here also which is what i've done and to get the maximum inside storage but because you put all this extra storage back here you get a minimum amount of storage inside. But a lot of people really love that um, that outside storage space. So a garage is a good option for a lot of people. Okay, let's move down to the next one. Uh, this is really similar to uh, a lot of them we've looked at, except that we have put the bed on the passenger side and it will partly get in front of the door. That's fine, not much, but a little bit. And then you have this whole side for uh, all the storage you want. I would make it floor, and what I would have done on my van if I had done this, is make this floor to ceiling storage, shelving. Uh, some people will even put a desk in here. Uh, go to the thrift store, go to Walmart, find a kind of an inexpensive cheap desk and put a desk in here. Now that limits the width of your bed. If you want a really wide, if you want a wide bed, 30, 34 inches or more, three feet, that's a wide bed. Uh, then that's going to cut into this. That's why this is so narrow. Um, and you do have this wasted space across here, but this is still a very good design. And if you're tall, you just have no choice but have the wasted space. So this is a good design, um, a really good design, particularly for tall people. Okay, let's move on. Uh, where's the next one? Here we go. Now, I, up here, you'll see that he has this marked as Vanagon style. If you know anything about um, Vanagons, uh, Volkswagen Vanagon type vans, this is how they look. They have storage and things all the way across the uh, driver's side and across the passenger side. And the bed literally takes up the middle. And uh, what they've done is, because there's nowhere really to set, uh, is this folds up to become a chair. And so you're seating in here and or maybe all the way back and it becomes seating and then the bed folds down to be full length. Um, you, you can, you know, if you're gonna build it, you can build it any way you want. But that's a common way to do it and the Vanagon style get, really probably gives you maximum amount of storage space. It's a little more complicated building. I mean, you're building, this is hinged and you've got storage all over on both sides. But if you have the uh, carpentry skills, this is an excellent, excellent design to give you maximum space. Um, something to really give some serious thought to. Let's go to the next one. Uh, now, like I said, my friend had wanted to carry a bike. And you can see here, he, he would, his plan was to take the front wheel off, which is common. Most people took the, take the front wheel off to store them. That's easy. And, uh, and he was going to store the bike upright here. And he was going to build a table. Remember, we had a, a table once before. And he was going to hinge it off this upright storage rack 
uh, and then it would hinge down and then this would fold up into a seat. So he's actually created a bicycle storage area and a dinette table that folds away. And so if you work on your computer a lot, you cook a lot, uh, this would work really well for that purpose. Uh, and then he was going to build in storage over the bed here. That's what this pink is. And then across this side, uh, he's going to put more storage and a galley. I think that was going to be his, uh, his sink and his stove. We're going to sit here. And then this is designated as a fold-up table. In other words, he was going to put in a hinge across here, and then it would fold out and become an extension and workspace uh, for the countertop, the countertop for the kitchen. So he could work on it, put a stove in here, put in a small sink, and work there. Very. No this is a really good design. The the table, if you're if you need to work, uh, say you you work from your your van, you uh, design websites, you make videos like I do, or you run a website, whatever you do. You're a web designer. You're a coder. Uh, having a place to sit out your laptop and move around and then be able to fold it away hinged up into this area would be a really big plus. So this is a good design in particular for people who need to work and enjoy cooking. So if this is the seat, he could sit here at the seat on looking into the desk or you could fold the desk up and sit here and cook because this would be his kitchen and he'd have a stove in there. So very good plan. Now, this one, uh, he actually put in a sink and a stove area. He would put a fridge, a small uh, a dorm fridge or a 12-volt compressor fridge. If it were me, I would put my compressor fridge under here on a slide out, and it would just slide right out. I'd get into it, and then I'd slide it away. I'd have countertop on top, and this is where I would work, on the countertop, uh, stove to cook, wash dishes here, storage above and then the bed goes back across here. Uh, and then he was going to put an overhead storage above on each side, and then this would just be a full height storage unit, and you can see he's put this in. This is where he would store his bike. He might uh, he would uh, turn this uh, handlebar to the side, take the first seat, front seat off, and he could store his bike in here. Uh, now, this one is a little unusual. He's got a side view. This is actually the side view. This is the wheel well. Uh, this is where the bed is across the back. Now, this is the seat. Uh, let me go up here a bit. And see this? This pops up and becomes this seat. And then he sits in here, and he would have to have um, his his mattress, his bedding, would have to be cut in, in sizes so that it would fit in there. And uh, he just, it's just one of those things you have to figure out. But then that gives him his lounging and seating area here. Now, as uh, let me just say that as far as I'm concerned, by far the best lounging seating area is to take your front passenger seat and put it on a swivel. And so we don't discuss that here. It's not really on topic. But if you make this your lounging seat by swiveling it around, then you free up the need for the seats back here at all. And that gives you a little more, a little more um options, I think, a little more use of space. But this is a creative idea, and you can see this as a side view, the wheel well, the seat back, it just will stand up. It would be hinged here, and then it would stand up to here. It would be hinged here, stand up, and then he'd put a stop of some kind to keep it standing upright there. Works really well. And then storage here, storage all across here. Uh, is, this is all real creative space, use of this space. So there you have it, a whole bunch of sizes and options. And uh, so, again, uh, uh, this stuff is all on my website. So let me highlight this again for you. Here is the website, the page. It's cheaprvliving.com, conversions, detail, oh, slash conversion details, floor plans, uh, and bed design for van conversions. And I'll put a live link in the description below. So go down there for the live link. And uh, this is the page. And there we go. I'm going to stop there. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, just, you know, some great floor plans, something for you to consider. Uh, let me know in the, in, the, in the comments below. Did this work for you? Was this helpful? I know I'm not, you know, I, I think this was really a good this, the plan. And I'll do this with more. I've got some real good information up here. So there you have it, folks. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, like us on YouTube. Oh, look, a little buddy. Got a little me, a little buddy right here. 
And uh, oh, two, I got a, I got little buddies. I got an Ewok, and uh, I'm not sure what the black one is, but it's a, definitely an Ewok. You can all see that. Uh, so I'm glad you watched us. You joined this. Hope you got something out of us. Uh, if you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Uh, I'm surrounded by dogs. Ha, 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 ha.